One of the men who lives in Rapid City now, Stan Hoth Hawthorne, helped build the steps on Harney Peak at the fire tower. <clears throat> and he gave us all this bunch of tools right here. And um, he got an oral history today. I don't know. Did you get to talk to him? Okay, this photo <clears throat> was at Wind Cave. And um, it, it, was, it was said it was after a f they fought fire, which I don't think it was. But the fellow in the upturned hat with the small brim, that's Roy Bledsoe. And he was a neighbor of mine at Oral. And actually, he kind of is the one that got me started on this book because he grew up at Oral. I grew up at Oral. He's an old man. And I went to get pictures of Oral from him. And he says, well, I don't have any. But I, got, I was in the CCC's of Wind Cave. So he had all this stuff laying out, and the, and the picture was one of them. And um, so I did the book on Wind Cave National Park, the first 100 years, and that has a chapter on the seas. And then I decided to do the, um, the one just on the Civilian Conservation Corps. And I put that photo on the cover of my CCC book. And some people at church knew a man who they had all lived in Hawaii at a time. And he lived in Washington State. And he had been in the seas at Wind Cave. And he worked in Hot Springs. And so they bought one of my books and sent to him. And he called me and he said, I took the photo that's on the cover of your book. <laughs> and he was a baker in Hot Springs at Wayside Bakery. Oh, that's um, all these things, well, I bought a few things on eBay, but most everything else was uh, donated. Um, Kathy Anderson, who recently retired uh, as the exhibit uh, creator there at the Mammoth site, came up with all these really good ideas on how to, how to display things. Um, Copy Country in Rapid City did all of her printing. Kathy did the layout on her computer. And then she just emailed it up, and they printed it and mounted it and put this. It's, it has a covering. It's kind of like a, a laminate, but it's, it doesn't shine. And these just stick to the wall. They say they can be taken up and down, I think, 100 times. Huh. Just some sort of, but I can see they're a little bit loose, so we need to fix that. Well, we won't do that today, though. No, we're not. not so, so how long, how long has this project been, how long has this taken to get this to where it is today? My book came out, my CCC book, in 2004. And at the Journey Museum, we had a, a debut of the book. And it was kind of a reunion. We put it in the paper, and we had a lot of CCC guys show up. And from that, I established a mailing list. And they used to have reunions all the time, but they hadn't had any for a few years because they got old, they got tired, and they didn't want to do it. So I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to get together and hear their stories. So I would just mail out a postcard, and i say, come to this restaurant at this time at lunch, and you don't have to RSVP because they're elderly. I thought they might get up in the morning, and they, they don't feel well. And I told her a week ago I'd be there, and what do I do? And, so I wanted to make it, make it easy. And we started meeting like that. Then we had the national reunion in Rapid City. And then Melvin called, Melvin oh, Herbinson, in 2005, okay. October 2005. Melvin Herbinson called and said he would um, like to buy a statue. And of course, to have a statue, then we had to have a, a legal organization, so it was a nonprofit. And we set that up and decided to, we wanted a museum. And we were going to send out a fundraising. Well, Melvin was going to give us half the money for the statue first. So we're going to send out a fundraising letter. And we said, the first question everybody's going to say is, where are you going to put it? So we kept saying, we wanted it in front of a museum. We wanted it in front of a, a town that had a lot of CCC camps, a town that's open all year. And we kept coming back to Hill City. And then this building opened up. Um, Excuse me, the Forest that's, Service, right? This was a Forest yeah. Service building until, I think it's been three years ago. Um, it, 
it was um, vacant when they, they moved to Rapid City to a consolidated office. And when they did that, then the city of Hill City was negotiating with the Forest Service, which took probably a year and a half, maybe two years, for them to get their little thing in a row. <laughs> and, and then it finally, um, after some more turmoil, it turned out that they said that the chamber could have the down, uh, part of the lower level for the visitor center, and um, we could have this. So, how do you feel? Tired. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly gratified that this was able to happen with so many of the CCC guys still around, able to see what we had done. I think today there were, I think there were about 30 CCC guys, and they came from all over the state and a couple from North Dakota. Um, that's the best part, is, is letting them know we appreciate the work they did. And, and how, and I asked each of them this, so I'll ask you as well, how important do you feel it is to have a place such as this? It really brings the history home when people can come in and, and look at this picture of Harney Peak and say, well, hmm, my granddad helped work on that, something like that. Or um, Maybe they, they saw a, a saw in their granddad's shed and they didn't know what it was about. And now all of a sudden, um, it just, for them to go to, say, the Peter Norbeck Center in Custer State Park, it's a rock-faced um, building that's now a museum and a visitor center. For them to go there and say, my granddad worked here. He might have touched that very rock. It makes them realize that the, the history is so, so recent, really. This is about, we're talking, well, the CCCs, it was 76 years ago that they began. It's not that long ago. Okay. Last thing, take me over here and just for sound, uh, tell me what's in this, uh, this display case, this display case over here. Yeah. Melvin Hermanson, is the fellow who donated the money for the, stat the CCC worker statue that we dedicated today. And this was one of the uniforms he wore, and it has um, seven, seven stripes. And he was in for six years, and he said he got a striper every year. Well, I don't know what the seventh one was for, but anyway, this was something that he, that he wore. Um, he, was in the, he was a mess steward in the end, and so, they were not under the restrictions of being in for only a six month hitch at a time or a one year hitch. He was in for six years and they were, they were exempt. Um, just different things that we collected to show that um, the, um, well this one, this came from Gabe Raba. He was also here today, he's 97. And what is that? What is that? Uh, it's a it. pillow. Uh, it's a, a silk pillowcase about um, 18 inches square and it's to mother, one of those gushy old silk pillowcases, pill covers. Cool, that's fine, thank you. I remember, I forgot. Yeah. South Dakota camps were integrated. There were in, young Indian men and at least two black men that I've seen. There was also an Indian division of the CCC, and those were um, on the reservation. And that was designed so people, married, married guys could stay at home and work on the reservation and do some jobs. And I have found very little information yet on that. I just know it existed, and they built, they did some dams like Milk's Camp Dam and uh, a few other um, dams like that. And so far, that's all I know they've done. And uh, I only I heard from uh, T. N. Nelson in uh, down on the reservation, um, and he sent me a basketball photo of some of the guys when they they had a basketball team. Oh, cool. And that's the extent of my Indian. Is pardon me. It's okay. called CCCID, CCC Indian Division.